Okay, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to today's meeting of the Planning Applications Committee. Go straight on to the agenda. Item number one is the fire evacuation procedure. We're not expecting the fire alarms to go off, so if they do, we'll treat it for real. And if we're I'll turn my phone off, that's a good reminder as well. Um, so if we can evacuate this room from either side of the chamber, down the down the steps and out the front door and meet across by the Yorkshire Bank. If anybody needs any help, if you can let us know, we'll make sure that happens. Um, it's also a good time to ask you to turn your phones off, please, or put them on to silent. And just to inform people that, as is the normal practice these days, the meeting is being recorded and will be sent out via the Council's website in the next couple of days. <coughs> Item number two, uh, to receive apologies for absence. Wendy? Chair, Council, Councillor Wilson. Can you add Councillor Wilson to that then, please? That it. Item number three is to confirm the minutes of the meeting on the 28th of November. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four is to receive declarations of disclosable pecuniary and other interests in accordance with the Member's Code of Conduct if they're not already printed. None? Okay, thank you. Item number five are declarations of contact. Yep, Councillor Shepherd. Declarations of contact by residents on item one and item three, and I've not declared how I'll be voting on any of the matters. Okay, thank you. Which takes us on to. Applications on which the public have indicated a wish to speak. Um, each speaker will be allowed their three minutes to make their points. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we'll start. It will start by the officer introducing the, the report, and then people will be given their three minutes. However, members may at some point uh, want to ask for any items of clarification only from anything arising from what you've said in your three minutes. Again, following on from that, if the officers need to come back with anything else, they will do. If not, when something is moved and seconded, the committee will debate the matter uh, and hopefully reach a decision. Uh, sometimes they don't. They might want more information or, as was the case today, they might want to go on the site visit, but mostly we determine the applications uh, on the day when they're on the, on the agenda. Um, just to inform members as well, uh, I've, I've just been informed that item number two, Donnythorne Avenue, application has been withdrawn. Okay. And for those people that went on the site visit today, um, well done, especially considering the weather and uh, I apologise for me not being there. I got held up on a civic engagement. Okay, in that case, that takes us on to item number one, which was the site visit to Prince's Avenue, Nuneaton. This application is for a proposed two-storey extension to the rear of former car show room at 24A Princess Avenue and for the, cre the creation of two flats at first floor and the use of the ground floor as an A1 retail pharmacy. The site is near the corner of Princess Avenue and Bracebridge Street, Bracebridge Street and has currently been vacant for a number of years. 
The commercial pre uh, premises used to be a car sales unit some years ago. The following plans will show the extensions which were approved under a previous permission for the conversion of an existing show car showroom to two new flats at rear, um, at rear ground floor extension and a rear ground floor extension and a two-story side extension to 24 Princess Avenue. Uh, where the arrow is, this was a previously approved and shows a rear extension to, to 24 Prince, Princess Avenue. To the front facing Princess Avenue is a side extension to 24 Princess Avenue and um, side extension to 24A Princess Avenue with, with two flats. At this time it was one at ground floor and one at first floor levels. The current plan is just for the conversion um, of the car show sh car showroom to uh, A1 Pharmacist at ground floor level and two flats at first floor level. The key issues in determining this application are the principle of residential development, appropriateness of the change of use, the sequential approach impact on residential amenity, impact on visual amenity, and impact on highway safety. In regard to the principle of development, the need, the need for housing is well document, documented within the borough. The pros, proposed residential units will add a small amount of residential use within the existing urban area and work and will not contrast with the surrounding uses within what is mostly a residential area. The change of use to the pharmacy at ground floor level is required by the applicant to re relocate and expand their current business, which is on um, Edward Street. By, by utilising these larger premises the, um, at Princess Avenue, um, will benefit the applicant to move, move his business forward. Since the application site was a form of commercial use, the precedent of that use, being a, of it being a commercial use, has been established, and therefore it's considered that the use is an appropriate use within the residential area. Within... within uh, an A1 use is, is uh, such an application where it's normally located within a town centre, district centre, or a local centre, and lastly, on the, at the edge of centre. In this, lo in this circumstance, it's considered an, an out-of-centre location. However, the reason for it being located in, in this location is because it's tied to the old male surgery um, down on Marlborough Avenue. The applicant um, argues that it makes sense for a pharmacy to search for premises within the catchment area of the old mill surgery rather than looking for uh, district centre locations, town centre locations, or edge of centre locations. In this in instance, it seems logical that the applicant has searched within the catch catchment area for the old male surgery. This map here shows, shows the outline of the catchment area and um, indicates that Princess Avenue is lo located within this area. In regard to the residential amenity, there have been objections raised by the community in regards to antisocial behaviour. Warwickshire Police have also stated that there has been no observable correlation, however, between drug users and pharmacy burglaries. It's considered that although an A1 retail use can sometimes bring disturbance in its locality, this is an unknown quantity within this area and there are no grounds to refuse the pharmacy on antisocial behaviour. 
environmental health have raised concern, however, regarding noise arising from the pharmacy use. So a condition has, has been recommended which restricts the hours of use and is sub- subsequently considered to mitigate any sig- significant harm from noise to the residents. There was also concern in relation to the flats and, and shop front overlooking 19 Princess Avenue. However, even though the, the site is within the recommended distance set out in the residential design guide, the guide also points out that where, where in circumstances where, where, it, where overlooking is above, over a highway, that should be considered as a flexible condition to, to, to not refuse the application. In this, in this instance, the flats will be overlooking a highway, so therefore it's not in, not in accordance to recommend refusal on, on the grounds of being overlooked. The car sales premises will add a new shop front elevation and add first floor extension above the car sales premises, linking to number 24 Princess Avenue. The plastered finish will match number 24 Princess Avenue and will be similar to several existing properties in the neighbourhood. The two-storey extension to the rear is set back from Bracebridge Street and will only be briefly noticed when passing by from Bracebridge Street. Street. There are other ex- extensions shown on the plans, as pointed out earlier, and these have already been approved. The Highway Authority have been consulted and raised no objections to the scheme and, considered, and it is considered that any potential harm to the highway safety is not so significant as to warrant a refusal. To the rear of the pharmacist, there are several car parking spaces, although the proposal may be reliant on some on-street parking at some time of the day, but not to the detriment of highway safety. I should also point out that Councillor Julie Jackson has been contacted by residents who are concerned about the increased traffic arising from this application. The councillor shares these concerns and that parking is is already at a premium in this location. The councillor considers that there are other local pharmacists, so it cannot be argued that this will bring a community facility to the area that would outweigh the extra traffic movements from from this development. Nonetheless, officer recommendation is for approval. Hi, uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, Residents in the area do not actually have an issue with the proposed residential aspect of the application. Most are happy that this site will finally be tidied up. They do, however, have concerns regarding the commercial aspect. Residents have raised concerns regarding antisocial behaviour. Whilst I do understand that this may not be a planning issue to the committee, I feel the need to raise concern that the council's communities teams seem to be unaware of the issues faced by these residents. The police have issued two dispersal notices over recent times because of severe antisocial behaviour. They raise concerns regarding parking and traffic problems. There is already a parking issue in Prince's Avenue, with cars parked both sides of the road. Some visiting the doctors, some stopping at the off-licence, as well as town centre workers parking all day. Any additional traffic will not only impact on established residents, it will probably severely impact on future residents of this proposal. My biggest concern is the same as the residents with regard to the need of an additional pharmacy in the area. Section 3 covers the sequential approach, advising that the applicant has failed to provide a sequential test and considered that there is little merit in doing so. It goes on to say that the site has not been proven to be an acceptable out-of-centre location for, what, uh, for a pharmacist. Moreover, the MPPF states, 
that where an application fails to satisfy a sequential test, it should be refused. Table 1 seems to satisfy the officers by indicating that 50% of prescriptions are dispensed by the five local pharmacies, around 13% at Pharmacy Republic, presumably the other 50% are dispensed outside of this area. We have more than a few vacant properties in Nuneaton Town Centre. I believe that through good planning we can influence this by ensuring that developments suitable for town centre usage are directed to our town centres. I would ask the committee to refuse this application and I would ask our officers make a request that de the developer provides us with a sequential test in line with MPPF guidance. Thank you. Mr. Idris Sheikh. Good evening, panel. Um, I think the context is laid down um, on the on the slide back, but uh, I just thought I'd uh, provide a viewpoint anyway as a, as a long-standing resident there. Um, over the past decade, we've experienced consistent antisocial behaviour, um, causing uh, significant emotional distress, uh, an impact to our quality of life. Uh, Council has already pointed that out in the previous comments. Um, traffic, parking and noise pollution have also and always been a consistent issue. Uh, you may already be aware these issues have been reported on several occasions to a number of agencies. Regular meetings have taken place with the police, local councillors, um, MP Marcus Jones, resulting in uh, said ASBOs and dispersal orders being executed. Um, through the hard work of all these agencies and residents over a significant period, we've only recently begun to have some respite. But I feel with these proposals, residents feel we're going back to square one. Um, currently, there's existing concerns in the community around uh, intimidation from methadone users who congregate consistently around Pharmacy Republic at Edward Street. Uh, and we fear a replication of this on Prince's Avenue. Um, we've got um, a number of antisocial behaviour elements with the off-licence and alcoholics who currently congregate outside the off-licence, which is directly opposite the proposal outlined. It's a worrying and, and toxic combination, in, again, impacting quality of life for the residents. Um, the proposed opening hours um, are, well, currently uh, Pharmacy Republic operates Monday to Friday, 9am to 11pm, and weekends, 9am to midnight. Um, you know, the, the, the lighting, etc., will cause light pollution directly into some of the residents' homes that hopefully you've had a view on your visit today. We see also inconsiderate parking currently in, uh, in Edward Street, um, and the uh, acceptance will only out, you know, encourage parking, which will inconsiderate parking, which will pose a consider considerable risk to pedestrians and children going from to and park which is in close proximity. Um, we would appreciate there's a, comp a compelling need or demand, but we already have five pharmacists existing in less than five minutes walking distance. And as resi residents, we have no wish to have a further establishment forced upon us. The five-bedroom house and two additional flats uh, uh, proposed will create significant parking demands on their own, and to add a chemist into the mix will mean a further loss of on-road parking. And particularly when most properties there do not have off-road parking, residents will be negatively impacted through a further erosion of this valuable residential benefit. Press your button off your mic. Uh, are there any points of clarification? Councillor Pomfret. Uh, you mentioned that social behaviour uh, in relation to the off-licence and... Um, the existing pharmacy on Edward Street. Uh, what about the... Uh, is there any so antisocial behaviour in the area opposite the old male surgery, the children's playground? Occasionally there is, but nothing major. Any other points of clarification? No? In that case... Councillor Phillips. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm going to speak against the recommendation, although I have no objection at all to the business actually getting on, so to speak. 
Um, there is a failure to carry out a sequential test by the applicant. The failure has already stated the MPPF states it's a test. If a test fails to satisfy, it should be refused. We haven't even had a test. The current pharmacy site is 300 metres away from a town centre. The proposed site is not a local centre, is further away from the town centre and is in a residential avenue. As a public community, there are four pharmacies listed in the catchment area. There are only two in the town centre. The pharmacy only dispenses at most 13% of prescriptions from the surgery it wishes to move closer to. From the figures produced, 60% of prescriptions are dispensed outside the catchment area. The applicant wishes to attain A1 class when at present it has no class. It should be tested that when there is no class identification and therefore it should fail, as there any former class has long since been discarded. There is a referral to it being a car showroom. That was the long and distant past and it makes it seem like it was a car showroom just a couple of years ago. That is not the case. The regional design guide in this instance should be used to object to the application as the recommended distance is 20 metres. Whilst the regional design guide seeks to flexibility, 12.3 metres does not allow enough flexibility to the residents to be acceptable. It is over 40% short of the recommended distance. If the recommendation is accepted, the impact on the avenue and the character will change. It will increase footfall where it is not required. It will increase the lack of privacy and community of the avenue. The noise levels outside houses may increase as the pharmacy operates a late night or week opening times. Again, with these op operating times, this would be more suitable in a local district or town centre, not in a residential avenue. Chair, I hope the applicant does find a suitable site to move to, but I do ask the committee to consider refusing this application, and if it does go to appeal, I think it can be defended, and at least the applicant has that opportunity, whereas residents do not. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No? <clears throat> In that case, Mohamed Labutta. Can you put your mic? We propose the pharmacy because it's not very far where the exist pharmacy already in Edward Street. The main concern about the neighborhood is the social behavior. This property been abandoned for last 12 to 15 years and no investment been done. It's been approved two or three times about six to eight flats and nobody invested on this property. We took over last year. We make this family house where I'm going to live with my family. And we made it very nice as the committee visited today. And we're going to invest more money to next door to make it two more flats on the top. The pharmacy is already exit in the neighborhood. It's not very, very far from they are proposing now. And is near the old mill surgery as well. So more concern about the parking and the social behavior. The social behavior was bad on this corner of this, pro this street. The reason because it was abandoned this property for a very, very long time. It's all boarded up, no investment has been done. And when we took over, we had a lot of problem to deal with it. So we sort everything out, we investing the money, we build the house, and it's a very beautiful family house. We invested a lot of money. And we invested more money to the next door to generate two flats and the pharmacy. The parking issue we got on the back in the Bresby Street, we got loads of parking out there, which the pharmacy going to use and the people who's going to live in the flat. There is a parking spaces about, I can say, six to eight car parking spaces there. So once we build this property, it's stop about the social behavior and the parking problem as well. So I can't see any reason to refuse this application. Please consider it very carefully. This is good for the community and is good for this street because this property was having a big, massive issue 
for the social behavior for a very long time. Since we took over last year, and we generate a very good corner of this, this, on this street. So thank you very much. Is there any issue, please? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> any points of clarification? No? In that case, can we move on to Shazli Hassan, please? Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, I just want to clarify a point. I think the, the council members are being misled slightly when they're saying that this is an additional pharmacy. I would just like to say this is a relocation. The pharmacy in Edward Street, if this ap uh, relocate, uh, application is granted, then the pharmacy in Edward Street will be closed and the contract will be transferred to Princess Avenue. So there will not be an additional pharmacy in the area. That was the first point that I think needed clarification. With regards to antisocial behaviour, Pharmacy Republic takes this very, very seriously and we have a zero tolerance policy. We have had in, uh, incidences in the past where there have been clients who have been aggressive, but we work proactively with ad action and we nip that in the bud. As far as I'm aware, we haven't had any complaints made to ourselves regarding antisocial behaviour. In fact, the community loves us. We provide a valuable service. We're open when other pharmacies are closed and by moving to the new premises, we'll be able to further add more services. For example, I'll give you an example, travel vaccinations. A lot of, that, uh, a lot of the community have to travel to Coventry to get vaccinations, for example, for, for the Hajj pilgrimage. By having a larger space, we'll be able to offer these facilities. Uh, with regards to the dispersal notices, I think it was quite apparent that it, it seems that we're trying to paint that everything is happening outside Pharmacy Republic, but this is not the state. And this is not the state. Uh, the councillor mentioned that the, there have been dispersal notices opposite Old Mill Surgery in the park. Uh, Mr. Muhammad has mentioned that the site has been derelict for a number of years. And again, antisocial behaviour occurred there because, simply because the site was not being used. Since we've been in uh, Nuneaton, we have not seen any improvement made to that site. We're offering to invest in the town. The town that has been good to us, we want to repay that. We want to invest in the town. We want to provide a better service. If our business increases, and obviously this will have an impact on the local community, because we will require more staff. Uh, I th think, with regards to the highway issues, parking is provided on site, so I don't think that will be a problem. I mentioned previously, if by moving closer to the surgery, the, pa the patient has already driven to the surgery, parked within the surgery, there will be no need for that patient to actually take their car and drive to a pharmacy. They can simply walk across the road. So we will be reducing traffic if this move is allowed. Uh, are there any other points? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. No? Okay. Thank you. So the speakers, anything you need to come back on, Darren? No? No, Chair. Okay, thank you. In that case, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, which is to approve the application? Is that seconded? Thank you. Any member? Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Chair. Things. Whilst the pre-talking is going on, I've made a, making a few notes, running out of paper uh, with this one. Uh, I'm a bit uh, confused by the logic of all the objectors. Uh, I'd like to uh, compliment Councillor Phillips on his knowledge of the planning portal. I've quoted some good uh, information there. But uh, whilst uh, we were talking, while I was listening there, I made two lists uh, of uh, things that would possibly need a sequential test if they were being applied for today. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not always 100% uh, uh, when my travels around the town, but I think we've got a, within a few hundred yards, we've got a temple, we've got a mosque, we've got a school, we've got at least one community centre, uh, we've got a GP surgery, as mentioned, we've got a multiple uh, use games area, we've got a derelict premises not far from this one, uh, we've got a residential home for the elderly, and I think 
the probation service have got a, a premises on Edward Street. Commercially, we've also got a veterinary surgery, uh, what I would call a bric-a-brac shop, uh, a general store, I'm not sure how many general stores, but I can think of at least two in the area. Uh, a second-hand white goods uh, uh, retailer, a, uh, a wrought iron uh, gate manufacturer, a hosiery uh, manufacturer, uh, an insurance advice, and at least one off-license. So, yes, the main uh, use of the area is, is uh, accommodation, private accommodation. And it's typically uh, an eaten red brick terraced uh, private accommodation, which is always going to have a problem if the uh, uh, occupiers of the houses own cars. So I don't see what the real issue is with a, a pharmacist moving around the corner to bigger premises. In fact, I agree with an awful lot of what the last speaker said about, you know, it, it might, possibly won't, but it might reduce the parking problem. And I would say a lot of those things I just listed are the sort of places where you have uh, uh, antisocial behaviour, not necessarily outside of a chemist. It could be any one of those places. So I'm all in favour of this move. I, I, I like having uh, uh, local amenities local to me. Even if you've only got to walk 300 yards, uh, I'd prefer to walk 50 yards. So uh, I'm going to vote in favour of this uh, recommendation, Chair. Thank you. I've got concerns about the increase in traffic. The development hasn't met the sequential approach, and there are empty properties in the town centre where I think this development should be cited. Um, the residential desire guide hasn't been met in regard to 19 Princess Street. It's 8 metres short, 24 foot in old terms. And I've got real concerns about the parking space. There's only one allocated for the pharmacy, and the gentleman has just said there's going to be more staff going in there, so I'm just wondering where they're going to be parking. Um, if the committee is mindful of approval, I would ask that we could add a condition in terms of um, no illuminated signage outside the building. Thank you. That appealed to me about this application, not least the sort of derelict state the site is in at the minute. It does trouble me a bit that it's quite a narrow street. Residential design guides we've mentioned lots of times. Uh, so the, the, the residents on the opposite side of the street could, whether there's illuminated signage or not, land up with you know quite brightly lit shop windows there until 11 o'clock at night, midnight at the weekends. I think if we do, uh, we are minded to approve this um, application that we should do all we can to limit the amount of light these premises give out, especially, uh, you know, in, in, at night, basically, and the late evening. Thank you, Chair. Slightly late, I did get caught in traffic from Coventry in this rather um, cold and, uns and uh, difficult weather for some people. I've listened to both sides of the argument, and for me it is a finely balanced argument, but I can see merits in both. However, to try and lay the blame for all antisocial behaviour issues in an area potentially at, at the doors of a new, well, a relocating pharmacy. This isn't a new pharmacy, it's a relocating pharmacy. Mm -hmm. I think to try and paint that this is somehow going to be the source of all ills um, isn't actually helping the situation. If there are ongoing issues, surely the best way forward is to work with authorities such as the proposed pharmacy, the police and, and, and our antisocial behaviour officers to try and come up with a solution. There's talk of the sequential test, but we've already got a pharmacy in this area. We are talking about moving it around. This isn't a brand new pharmacy. It is wanting to relocate to bigger premises. I'm not sure the sequential test would be of any use in this instance. And whilst I welcome some recognition that there are actually empty shops in the Neaton Town Centre, contrary to what we're always told, um, you'd be putting another pharmacy in an area where there isn't a need for an additional pharmacy in the Neaton Town Centre. There is already um, some competition in the Neaton Town Centre. There is the issue about um, Edward Street and all around there and the residential design guide, but let's face it, if we were building Edward Street now and the surrounding estate, we would not be building it like it is now. 
uh, with the red bricks and the spaces between people and the and the uh, car parking provision. It was built for a different era, but we have to make do with what we've got and the, the competing needs of, of what people have. And there is an element of an elderly population in that area who will struggle to walk into the town centre, whereas having a pharmacy on hand will be beneficial to them. And I actually agree with the logic which uh, Mr Hassan has put forward, that having a... GP surgery near to a pharmacy makes sense. Um, it is, in this day and age, surely we should be doing more of these things, putting services which interrelate together as far as we possibly can with the people. In, in industry speak, I think they call it lean. I got fed up with being leaned at work. It got on my nerves. But to, to an extent, it is correct. It is leaner for people and for businesses. So, And also, we're being told constantly by certain... Uh, areas of the uh, press that pharmacies are in decline and that we need to save the great British pharmacy but we're being invited to actually help one not only survive but thrive and relocate premises and into the bargain we get to regenerate an area that has been left derelict for a number of years I, I mean I just think around the corner from where I am with the 4 by 4 garage everyone thinks it's the 4 by 4 garage but if you followed some of the logic of arguments put forward to us, you would say, well, you couldn't redevelop there at all because it's been derelict so long, it's lost its status, but legally it hasn't. It, it has got a status, whether we like it or not. I think this is, on balance, whilst there will be some issues to residents, but on balance, I think it is good for the area and good for the wider community in, in, the, in the population because it is helping a business to thrive and making more sense of key services which people need. Thank you, Chair. Mr Chair, uh, I actually drove down, um, I was there, not walked it, I walked, come down Edward Street, turned down and come into Prince Avenue down in there. And you, we have got bad weather. Oh, we, that's not hard to describe, obviously. But down each side of the road are parked cars. The parked cars all the way down, even opposite the where they're trying to build, there was one or two, there's a little bit of a gap, and I parked over the road. And there's a crossroads there. And when we tried to come out of there, we were all at a standstill because nobody could move because they're all trying to turn and doing whatever and parking. Take away the snow and uh, that. People have parked. It is... And when we talked about the house... I was a bit surprised about because I've been on here 20, about 23 years, and the first time I've heard today that across the street, you can look out your window and affect somebody else the other side of the road. I've never heard of that one before, but I've heard of it, heard of it today. Uh, and the one thing I did do, I stood by a tree. And it, that tree, once it grows, the one on number 19 across the road won't see the light. I think number 19 down there, we should... OK, they can object to whichever, whatever. The biggest problem to me down there with number 90 is, is, the, is the parking, is the traffic. Because there ain't no parking down there, there's nothing. When people come into there, I have no hassle. I, I, where they put them and do that somewhere, it's near town centre and all the rest of it, I don't... I get fed up of listening to it. We all have, must have everything in the town centre and all the rest of it. You'd be struggling to keep people in. And... I mean, we, I was, I've had an experience over the years of get, helping get into doctor's surgery in the woodlands. I've helped get surgeries, uh, pharmacies in other outside lairs for the community. So where it is, it's, it, and where it's directly, cause that's not so much of what it being outside the centre, it's how are we going to get in and get out of people there, because it is jammed now. You can't, we, we're struggling, you just cannot move. And we, when we want to put up further industry in, in, in whatever. I'm glad I don't live down there because must, people must fall out with each other with parking because other parking outside their houses because it's, it's horrendous in that in that area. Um, I know people uh, look at it because it's been derelict for so long and all the rest of it, but it doesn't take all the other problems away uh, that, that facing it, people down there. 
Uh, so that'll, that's my moan anyway. Any other member? No? In that case, um, I think that it, regardless of how the vote goes, which I'm going to take in a minute, what I'd like to do is move that, because I think it was a fair point about the illuminated signage. So whether or not this gets approved or not, I think we should cover our backs there. And if we could add a condition that any uh, external, inter, external illuminated signage be approved by the environmental health and by the, the planners. I can just uh, clarify that. We, we couldn't actually put a condition on because um, advertisement illumination is dealt with by separate legislation. But we could put a note on a decision notice um, to ensure that they're aware that the levels of luminance need to be as low as possible. If it's externally illuminated, then we would be considering that application anyway as a planning office. Um, but what you could do if you wanted is put a condition on to say that any external illumination, so floodlights, that sort of thing, um, are sent to us for approval before they actually get erected at the site. So that would help then control any luminance issues on the neighbouring properties. going to be added does it include just the amount of light thrown out from the shop windows themselves or just things and actually control the levels of luminance with inside a property that's not something that requires planning permission so we have no control over that quick one here that if you've got a four bay shop window which we've given, we're, we're looking at today I think the amount of light that could be coming out of there would be quite considerable anyway. So any uh, additional restrictions on light, I'm not quite sure as it would be uh, uh, well, logical in my mind again. Yeah. It is, uh, that we can't restrict the internal illumination, we can't restrict it, but I think people are here are listening to what we say and if it causes a problem then I'm sure that would come back to the planners or to environmental health. Um, but uh, I think the general thing about any, any, anything external would need to come back to us. I've I got the drift members are happy to include that within it as a condition to make sure that comes back. Having said that, uh, I'll move to the vote then. It was moved and it was seconded to grant planning, to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed plus that additional one. All those in favour of that? And again, two, and that's it, I think. So that's approved, thank you. Item number two has been with, ooh. I the wrong one, I think. <laughs> Item number two has been withdrawn. Then take, we, yeah. Could I ask just for clarity, and we'll come back, or has the application been withdrawn full stop? It's been completely withdrawn from consideration. Okay, it takes us on to item number three then, which is Edward Street, number six. Darren? Spot. In fact, there's two, there's two things there. Clearly, we can't have two different recommendations. It, uh, it's just a, it's a print ever. We're looking at the first one is the recommendation, but we, I'm glad you've raised the point, Councillor, because actually, right, if you cross out recommend to refuse, it's actually, I'll, I'll read it out, it's recommended to grant planning permission subject to... And if you can delete a legal agreement, so it's plan planning committee is recommended to grant planning permission 
subject to the conditions printed. Happy with that, Wendy? Mm -hmm. uh, and then delete, <coughs> delete the second paragraph. Thank you. Darren? This application is for the reconstruction of a barber's with additional first and second storey levels to accommodate flats. There have been there have been three letters of objection and three from three addresses relating to overshadowing, loss of privacy, being overlooked, additional noise and traffic due to the actual residents and their vehicles. Also, and the flats are not in keeping with the character and look of the neighbourhood. A petition has been received with 18 signatories of objection from 15 addresses. And the application is also being reported at the request of Councillor Phillips and Joe Shepherd. The key issues in the determining of this application are the impact on residential amenity, the impact on visual, visual amenity, amenity, and the impact on highway safety. The proposal will be opposite number seven and number nine Edward Street, some 15 metres away. The Council's Residential Design Guide advises a minimum distance of 20 metres separation at ground and first floor levels and 30 metres separation a storey higher. Notwithstanding, the Residential Design Guide also stipulates that there may be exceptions where the separation includes a public highway as people just passing by are more likely to look into someone else's property than, from, than people from across the road. Therefore, applying flexibility of the guidance should be applied in this instance with the result that there will be no significant impact to the residential amenity of the occupants to number seven and number nine, Edward Street. The proposed de development will remain attached to number eight, Edward Street, retaining the integrity of the Victorian terraces along Edward Street. Whilst the new build will be flush with number eight, it will be slightly shorter by just over half a metre, avoiding the appearance of being domineering and incongruous to the more traditional neighbouring properties. The applicant proposes to have flat windows to the front elevation, which appear out of char character with neighbouring prop properties, uh, as it is evident that houses have ground floor and first floor bay, bay windows to, to, to the sides of the applicant application site. Nonetheless, the properties directly across Edward Street do not have bay windows, and further up Edward Street, it's also noticeable that properties also do have flat windows. Consequently, it's considered that there is no dominating style to the front elevations along Edward Street and that the proposed flat windows would be acceptable and have no discernible detrimental impact to which, that, to which already exists. Also, with regards to the barbershop being an A1 use, it, requ it requires that there should be a shop frontage characterised by such a use and therefore a bay window at ground floor level would not be appropriate for such a use. It is therefore considered that there will be no visual impact on the occupants in the surrounding area beyond that which is currently enjoyed. This is a proposed design to the front elevation. The application form indicates four, four parking spaces are currently available. However, the high, Highway Authority consider that two spaces are more likely as, the, as this, this would involve tandem parking, thereby obstruct, obstructing the rearmost spaces. Nonetheless, the Highway Authority consider that given the proposal's location near to Queen's Road District Centre and the type of accommodation proposed, it is, likely, it is unlikely that it will result in a high demand for parking spaces for the new occupants, regardless of the significant demand from existing re residents for on-street parking. Nor will any additional demand for parking in the area lead to concerns relating to road safety as a result of the proposal. 
The car parking is proposed in front of this storage area here. <coughs> offer, therefore, offer to rec recommendation is for approval. Okay, thanks, Darren. Mr. Phillips. In, um, in favour of all opposition to this because um, the... Um, the barbers has been there a very long time, and obviously since the car went into it, must be almost a year ago now, um, through insurance or whatever, it does need rebuilding. The concern to the local residents um, is the height of the building and the fact that it's going to be, although I don't know if anyone takes any notice of the regional design guide now, residential design guide, I mean, because 30 metres, you know, the third... Second floor is way, way too high in the residential design guide for the neighbours opposite. Now, just because houses have been there a long time, it doesn't mean to say that any future development should put them, make them worse off. You know, so I would be minded for the committee either to go and have a site visit, I would ask them to, and look at the impact and whether or not three storeys or two floors on top of the barbers is actually a requirement that would benefit the area. Car parking, well, it is, there is no double yellow lines, etc. Coming in and out of there is a problem. People park on double yellow lines and they try and get away with it. Well, again, the haircut, which is fair enough, that's entirely up to them. You know, but I think it would be worth a site visit just to assess the impact on the neighbours that it hasn't had before. That's basically it. Barbers, yes. First floor, yes. Second floor, residential design guide, way out. But I don't know if anyone takes any notice of that anymore. Are there any points of clarification? No? Uh, Darren, anything? Councillor Pomfrey. Pomfrey. The accommodation, residential accommodation, is it... A flat on the first floor and a flat on the second floor, is that not so part of it? Nobody else? Darren, anything you need to come back on? Uh, if you don't mind, Chair, yeah. No. Sorry? I'd just like to point out that although um, there's three levels, the level uh, the, is still not as high as the existing properties. Okay, thank you. Right. To enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, which is uh, to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed? Councillor Pompey. Thanks, Chair. Well, I'm going to be accused, you know, of um, any any accommodation it will do any minute now. I don't go along with that view. I want, I'm interested about what the accommodation inside this building is going to be like. How big it's going to be? Is it going to be a first floor and a second floor flat? That sort of issue. Because the roof space, to me, seems to be quite small. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. The flats will be on first and second levels. Any other member? Councillor Shepherd. I would like to move a site visit so members can see the impact it will have on the street scene, the impact on residents. I am aware that it doesn't meet the residential design guide, as I mentioned in the last one, but there doesn't seem to be much consideration. Um, the traffic and parking issues are a concern. The, and it, as the, when the barbers was in operation, just before there's even two flats on top, they were constantly parked, double parked, and restricting the traffic movements down Edward Street. It became a real issue. Um, and the lack of parking spaces, the same for the officers have now just said possibly two. I don't think are adequate even for the flats, never mind the barbers underneath. So I'll, that's it, res uh, the members think about it, supporting the site visit. Thank you, Chair. I don't think I need a site visit. I saw it today. 
Um, well, I've seen it a few times. It's absolutely appalling. So something needs to be done in this place, in, in, with, with this premises. Um, and this seems a way of transferring what is really a temporary building into something more uh, lasting. With the residential design guide, we're going to go through this every time, aren't we? Because wherever you go in this town, including my own road, uh, you can't hit the new figures. We, we, we have what we have. We have a town with roads that were suitable for horse and carts, uh, and not, car, not cars and buses. So uh, we are stuck with that. Uh, and we, whilst I agree that we should try to make sure that we continue to, to get the, the residential design gone as, as much as possible, it's not always going to be possible. And what, this is one of the cases, because you're extending basically a try and keep in, in keeping with that terrace. Um, and I would go back to my previous comments with regard to the highways. We are not the highway authority. And like on the previous one, we accept there are problems with parking, we accept there's problems with vehicles, but there's nothing we can do about it. And if the highways authority are happy with it, then there's nothing we can do to change that. We can't even use it as a reason for uh, refusal. So I, would, I, I, I don't think I need to go on a site visit. Uh, I've seen it, um, and the plans to me look feasible uh, for what, uh, what needs to be done, and I would be happy with it uh, going, going through tonight. Uh, I think Claire would like just to clarify some of the points on the residential design guide, and remember it's a guide. Not a policy. The residential design guide makes it clear that the separation standards that we refer to is over private amenity space, where you would expect not to have people overlooking your private amenity space. So that's where, the where those separation standards come in. When we talk about distances over highways, it is very reasonable to expect that somebody standing on the footpath outside your own house will have a much better view into your property than somebody looking from the other side of the road. So that's where the residential design guide says over public spaces, then the, the separation standards can be reduced and it should be applied flexibly. The distance standards that are in the design guide and where they should be applied a little bit more rigidly is where it's over private amenity space where you would expect nobody really to be overlooking, so your own private garden area. Okay. <coughs> Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as usual, I'm going to try and throw a few, uh, what I think are engineers' logic into the look. Uh, I think blinds seem to be, uh, you know, solve that one. In fact, I've got a friend who's a, a blind fitter and he's uh, never short of work. Uh, when it comes to parking, if I was going to go there to have my hair cut, I'd probably go and buy my shampoo and stuff over at uh, the local supermarket and park there as a customer and go and have my hair cut. Uh, if I lived there, above this barber's, I would perhaps try and make an arrangement with the shops opposite that front onto Queen's Road. I'm not sure if they've got living accommodation above them, but there's loads of parking space at the rear of those shops. I quite agree, parking on, on Edward Street, uh, people who uh, uh, park on the double yellow lines, it's quite atrocious. Uh, I notice it quite a lot when I'm going up and down on my bicycle, well, excuse me, my bike, sometimes in my car. Uh, but I think that's as much the residence as in anybody uh, visiting a local, one of the retail outlets there. Uh, Generally speaking, I'm against flat roofs, or as we called it, a temporary building. I don't think they should be allowed because they need too much maintenance. So I'm all in favour of having a nice, an eaten red brick building to replace what's uh, a fancy shed that obviously needs replacing anyway. So, uh, and the fact that the roof line of the new proposed building is lower than the adjoining neighbour, and that the second floor windows are uh, roof lights that will be pointing more as much up into the sky as they will down onto the street. I don't think that's a, a reasonable objection. So I, I'll be voting in favour of this one. Thank you. 
You can have cur uh, nets. You can have net curtains uh, uh, as well. You know, but you don't want to be a bit boyish. Can you, can you, the house, the house is there now. Tell me how much higher they are to the house. Can we have the picture up? Because we're talking metres and I can't convert. I want you to tell me if it's two yards or three yards. Eh? Can I? You got the picture of the house? Of the, 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 there officer, you are, look. We'll let the officer oh, tell there it. you are. And what's half a metre? Uh, two foot. About three two foot. foot. Say two foot. Two yeah. foot. I ain't, I ain't being funny. I, I, I ain't brain enough to convert. Oh. Is that what it is? Councillor Wilson. ...into trouble, but I actually agree with almost every single word he said in his speech. Um, I, think, I think the opening um, slide actually said it all, really, that you, that you needed to see. That picture on the right-hand side paints a thousand words, as far as I'm concerned. That looks an absolute disgrace to this town and to this borough. And anything we can do to help improve that, I think, is... Uh, worthwhile supporting. I understand the issues, but we've, we've been uh, directed through the residential design guide. We haven't neglected the residential design guide. I can think of plenty of other applications that this committee has approved, large applications for 300 houses plus, where it has, because it, it has um, not gone with the residential design guide and approved it anyway, but it is there, as the Chair has said, as we hear it on planning and in licensing, it is a guide. It is not a hard and fast rule because when you go to appeal you tend to get told off when you uh, stick to things strictly as I'm sure the pe those who actually go to the appeals um, know and we get told quite often particularly on licensing um, but also on page 42 of our agenda um, it shows the proposed front elevation and side elevation and it is quite clear that the proposal is lower than the existing roof line and I think Councillor Bonner is right that the, that the incline of the roof, the dormer windows more or less, will not be overlooking directly onto the street scene. If anything, it will be uh, less visible to the street scene from both that height and at that angle of the window than is being suggested. So I think this will tidy up an area of the borough which is being neglected and will benefit the uh, area overall in terms of improving the amenity, not harm it. Thank you. It's being moved and seconded to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed. All those in favour of that? Wasn't seconded. All those in favour of the recommendation? And, and against? Somebody missing. So that's approved. Uh, I believe that concludes the business today. Thank you very much for your attendance. Be careful on your way home, and can I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and hopefully a, a prosperous one.